the handout I'll be working from, from my website, streaminglearningcenter.com. Scroll over there. Scroll down to learning. And then um, click this icon, and you'll be able to download the handout. I recommend you get it because it is very, <clears throat> it is very graphics and data intensive. What I tried to do in this uh, presentation, or what I was trying to do when I prepared for the presentation, was compare the quality of AV1, VP9, HEBC, and, and H.264, um, probably the most relevant four codecs um, that are on the market today. And made a lot of progress, did quite well, but didn't quite get to the endpoint that I wanted to. You'll see why in a second. I think there's a lot of good data here, but it's, uh, but it's incomplete. So the codecs that I tested were X.264 is the baseline. Everybody wants to know how X.264 compares to um, other codecs. I tested two flavors of HEBC, um, main concept codec and X.265, which is uh, the open source HEBC codec. I also tested VP9 from Google and AV1 um, from a supplier who will go unnamed. My focus was VOD only. Um, what I did was I created 720p, 1080p, and 4K test files, six data rates each. You'll see the grid in a moment. And I used seven short video files for my tests. So the last time I did an analysis like this, I used you know, two or three minute clips from Tears of Steel, Sintel, movies like that that are pretty well known. Some of the competitors were saying that they were, you know, others were tuning their codecs for these videos because they were so widely used in codec comparisons. So one of the, uh, the gentlemen from MultiCoreWare, who, who does a lot of comparisons, suggested that we go to a, a website that has a lot of different uh, test clips. And since they're so short, assuming this will work, I figured we'd, we'd go through them really quickly. They're between 5 and 20 seconds long. So this is a boat clip. Um, lots of motion, lots of detail. This is food market, and there's a whole lot of detail here. This is a clip called forklift that's a little bit challenging because we've got a lot of detail in the background, and we've got the gentleman in the forklift moving through it. This clip, I thought it was going to be more challenging than it turned out to be, but um, this is the liquor store. This is a static camera with a gentleman looking for different wine. And again, lots of detail, some motion. I thought this might be a little bit tougher to compress than it turned out to be. This is the pier clip. And this is lots of detail, lots of motion. And water is always challenging. This is ritual dance, lots of higher motion. And again, the clips are between five and, five and uh, 10, I guess 20 seconds long is the longest. And then here's a short segment from Sintel. You always want to test some animated clips because a lot of animated content getting out there. So what I did was I downloaded the raw file from either I had the raw file myself because some of these clips were shot for me, um, or I downloaded them from different sources. I inserted the time code, and I output 4K, 1080p, and 720p versions of those files. I um, wanted to create separate files because I wanted to take, <clears throat> I wanted to take scaling out of the, that of the equation. You know, if I, sent, I was sending these files to different vendors, if they use different scaling al algorithms to get to the 720p files, um, that could throw off the codec calculation. So I just wanted to say, okay, here's the 1080p source, here's the 720p source, and when I got the files back, I compared them with the 720p, the 1080p, and the 4K source. Simplified things for me. The files went out as MP4 files at very, very high data rates, um, so I don't think there was any degradation in overall quality. I sent this, the source files to 
main concept, multi-coreware, and the, uh, as I said, an AV1 vendor. You'll see why they're unnamed in a second. Um, verified the encoding parameters that they used, and then I ran uh, VMAP calculations, the new Netflix video quality metric using the Moscow State University video quality measurement tool. Okay, so if you came in late, this slide deck is now available for download on my website. The website is streaminglearningcenter.com. Um, scroll down to the third line, learning, and it's the presentation on the extreme left. So you don't have to take pictures. I mean, you're welcome to, but um, you'll get better fidelity from just downloading the file itself. Okay, so building the perfect codec comparison. What do you do when you want to um, do the best job possible? I mean, you agree on the clips and, the, and the, the encoding parameters. You just saw those. You encode the clips. You score the encodes. We're using, again, VMAP because I think that's the, if Netflix uses it, I trust it. It's, it's their metric. <clears throat> and then you subjectively confirm the scores. You know, it's, it's nice to get an objective quality metric, but you really do like to spend some time looking at the clips and making sure that the scores are, are accurate. They do act, represent the reality. And then you compute the, I'm not even, anybody know how to say this? I'm gonna call it, it's the BD metric. And, and the BD metric gives you a measure of efficiency, how much more efficient one codec is over the other. So what did I get done? I got this done, I got this done, I got this done. I was not able to subjectively confirm the scores. I got some files in as late as, I guess, Monday. So throw in a travel day, I didn't have a lot of time. And I wasn't able to get this done. The other thing that happened was we had a muck up of AV1. So the bitstream for AV1 is scheduled to be frozen by December 31st. Um, it's expected to be at least 20% higher quality than HEVC, and they're not going to ship the bitstream if it's not accepted by Netflix and YouTube as 20% higher. They're basically going to keep working if it doesn't match that quality level. And I wrote an article, AV1 status update. You can see the, um, you can see the, uh, the bit.ly URL there if you want to read up on you know, everything we know about when it's going to become available. So I was expecting AV1 to come out you know, significantly better than HEVC. And what I saw was it came back worse than the, the worse in terms of quality than the video I tested for Streaming Media East in comparison to HEVC. I was expecting significant um, improvements, and what I saw it was actually much, much closer, if not behind HEVC. So I went to the vendor, and basically what they did is they downloaded different versions of, so they're in the phase where they're creating new versions of AV1 codec to try and get it finalized. They downloaded a version that had a bug in it, they think, or, or somehow, didn't work with their encoding platform, so the files they say were substandard. So I'm going to show you some AV1 statistics because I had them included in the graphs that I had prepared already, but I, I don't think they're representative because uh, the, the Alliance for Open Media won't ship the codec if it's not at least 20% better than HEBC at the time uh, it's frozen. So this was kind of a big oops. <laughs> But it, it, you know, it's what happens. They're working fast. I'm working fast, and 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 uh, and that's where we are. So what's going to happen going forward? Um, I'm going to go back to my office, and I'm going to confirm the subjective scores for um, the HEVC codecs. I'm going to let the HEVC codecs look at each other's bit streams, perform their own subjective analysis. So everybody agrees. Yes, this is this is what the reality is. I'll compute the BD scores. I'll get updated AV1 files, and then I'll republish the results sometime in the next 30 to 60 days on either Streaming Learning Center or um, the streaming media site. So, you know, that's kind of the reality of where we are. <laughs> and, and, and all I can say is these results are, are preliminary. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time telling you how we encoded the files. Um, again, we encoded 720p, 1080p, and 4K versions at these data rates. And the only, the only parameters that I really specified in a hard way was um, keyframe interval and bitrate control. So I wanted bitrate control to be 110% constrained VBR because I think that's the best approach. 
And I wanted the keyframe interval to be two because that's what Apple's recommending. So beyond that, you know, whatever B frame setting, whatever reference frame setting, I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time trying to normalize that. What I tried to do is, was find a reasonable setting where main concept and X.265 performs similarly. So on, a, on a, a simple Intel Core i7 CPU, which is four core eight threads, we ran some timings and we found that the slow preset and the setting of 28 for main concept, which is their preset, were, were pretty close at encoding time. So the scores for main concept and X.265 are normalized for encoding time. I did not try and do that for VP9. Um, and, and I'm sorry, the, the, the lowest link should be VP9 and, and H.264. So with VP9 and H.264, I basically just said, you know, what are the, what are the maximum reasonable parameters somebody would use? And for, for H.264, that was um, the very slow preset. And for VP9, that was four and one. Four being the first pass which you, lose, you use the lowest quality setting, one being the second pass, and that's the second highest quality setting out of five. Now, both vendors, both main concept and X.265 provided the highest possible quality files they could provide to compare to AV1. So they provided two sets of files each, one at 28 and slow, one at 30 and very slow, but I didn't use those files because the AV1 encodes ended up not being competitive anyway. So when the AV1 files come back, if, if it looks to be relevant, I'll use the highest quality files produced by the HEBC vendors and probably just keep VP9 and, and uh, H.264. And then I measured quality with VMAF, the Video Multi-Method Assessment Fusion. Who's heard of VMAF? Who's used VMAF? I mean, it's, um, you get a lot of resistance with PSNR. Uh, most of the vendors dislike it. They say it doesn't accurately reflect the subjective ratings you would get from viewers. VMAF is the quality engine that's used by Netflix in their per title evaluation. So Netflix is using this every day to produce the encodes that we, you know, we watch on our Netflix channel. So I, I trust it, it, and I find it's a lot more, uh, it's, it's a zero to 100 scale, so it's, it's, there's just a lot more range than you see with PSNR. Most PSNR ratings are between 33 and 45, which isn't a lot of range. With VMAF, we'll see scores as low as 40 and as high as like 105, 106 here. So it's a nice range, and you really do see a big differential between the quality and the files. And I use the Moscow State University VQMT tool to compute these. So I usually use Hybrick as a vendor here. They've got a great analysis function that does uh, VMAF, but they don't decode AV1 files. So if I was only doing HEBC or HEBC VP9 and H.264, I would have used Hybrick, but because um, because they didn't do AB1 yet, I couldn't do that. Um, Moscow University, who has that? Anybody? Okay, I find it's a very useful tool. It does, um, it does uh, in addition to VMAF, which is new in 10.2, a version they'll be shipping in the next few months, it also does PSNR, SSIM, and, and a bunch of other metrics. So if you're into video quality metric calculations, you might want to consider picking up the uh, Moscow University tool. Okay, so, and again, this handout is available for download on my website now. I realize these slides aren't going to be that easy to see, but you can download them now at streaminglearningcenter.com. Um, scroll down, and it's this icon here under the, the learning row. Okay, so the results are going to be pretty consistent. In terms of presentation, the um, H.264 is going to be blue, and that, that's going to be pretty easy to spot. Um, X.265 is the orangey. That's a little bit hard to spot. Main concept is the gray, and, and, and main concept ended up being the, the leader in most of the, the um, comparisons that we saw. And I'll present some numbers when I look at the summaries for 
the 720p, 1080p, and 4K clips. The thing to understand about VMAF is that the, the numbers themselves, you know, higher is always better, but, you know, 100 really doesn't mean anything because it kind of depends on resolution. What is significant about VMAF is a differential of 6 is a just noticeable difference. So a just noticeable difference is a defined term that means uh, I think a significant majority, like 75% of the people will notice the difference in quality between the two, um, between the two video files. So here with, um, with H.264, we're down in the 40 range. And here, we're up in the 60 range. So this is, this is definitely a difference that most people would see. So what's the sweet spot for 720p? Um, you know, we went all the way up to 3 megabits per second. That's, most people aren't producing 720p at, at 3 megabits a second. I mean, with H.264, you're probably in the 1.5 to 2 megabit per second range. And with HEVC, you're probably in this range here. And what we saw is that, you know, H.264 is the clear loser in terms of overall quality. In this particular clip, VP9 did not perform that well. And this is AV1 started up well over here and then kind of tailed off. And then this is main concept slightly higher than X.265. And that's going to be the pattern we're going to see in most of the clips. So here's the food market clip. Again, H.264 is way down here. And the other four technologies are pretty tightly grouped. You're not going to notice any difference in quality between, uh, between the files in that particular clip. The forklift clip, I really thought this would be a differentiator because of the detail. But you see, again, there's not a lot of difference in X.265, main concept, VP9, and AV1. And up here, you know, the three megabits per second, there's very little difference between H.264 and the other technologies. Down here, in the lower data rates, we see a very significant difference in terms of overall quality. In the, you know, the relevant range between 5 and 1.5, um, these are all tightly grouped together. You're not going to notice any major difference between those. The liquor store clip, this is the, the clip of the man walking down the rows of, uh, of wine. Same pattern, very, very close for the top four. Much, much lower for H.264 at the lower bit rates, but getting pretty competitive. I mean, this is, a, this is like a 95, and this is like a 96 or 7. So you're not going to notice a difference at 3 megabits per second between any of the other technologies in H.264. This is the peer clip. And again, we see main concept on top. We see X.265 close behind. AV1's here. VP9 is falling behind. And H.264 is you know, significantly different here, but catching up when it gets to the high end of the data rate range. Same kind of pattern there. I kind of want to get to the summary. You know, we care about what it looks like for the aggregate. And the aggregate does not include um, AB1 in the drawing here because I didn't, get, I didn't get numbers for all the AB1 720 test clips. So I included the, the, the numbers here, probably shouldn't have, but you see the numbers for H.264, X.265, main concept, and VP9 here. And you see the graph. So again, it's, it's the pattern we saw throughout the entire 720 range. H.264 is lagging. Um, VP9 is lagging. On aggregate, it's, ag it, it's lagging less than we saw in some of the individual clips. Main concept is a slight lead, and X.265 is, is, is very close to it. So that's the 720p aggregate. Which setting on X.265? Pardon? Which setting on X.265? Slow. And that's. Um, if you came in late, you can download the handout, and all those details are covered in the handout as well. Handout's available at streaminglearningcenter.com. Obviously, with this type of data, you're going to want to download it because it's um, hard to read. So again, you know, familiar pattern. We've got um, H.264 lagging. We've got the main four pretty tightly grouped together. Um, 
and, and I know it's, it's a little bit frustrating. The colors are a little bit hard to tell. Um, AV1 here actually performs pretty well. And this is X.265. And main concept is, I think, this one. So this is, this is AV1. This is X.265. This is main concept. And VP9 was yellow. Now it's this color here. What's the relevant range for 1080p? Um, depends on who you ask. Probably in the three to five. You know, if you're going to go to HEVC, you're probably hoping to get half the data rate you were using for H.264. So I would say the relevant range is, you know, in here somewhere. And, you know, there's going to be a, a clearly visible difference between H.264 and the, the two HEVC technologies. Again, VP9 for this particular clip is not performing particularly well. A very tight grouping here of the top four technologies. And then H.264 is clearly behind. Forklift, we're not seeing a huge differential again, except for H.264. Liquor store clip, same deal. Pure clip, we're seeing. You know, it was a much better clip to distinguish between the different technologies. You know, here's H.264. That's the easy one to pick out. Main concept is red. And AV1 is this one. AV1 is actually starting to pick up a little bit in, 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 in the higher resolution. They only supplied 720p and 1080 clips. They did not supply any 4K clips at all in the AV1 format. Um, here's the ritual clip. Same pattern. This is main concept. Um, I'm going to have to learn how to pick my colors in Excel. Um, but it's a little bit clearer when you look at it on the screen than it is over here. And you should be able to see that pretty effectively. Here's a Cintel clip. And then here's the overall average for 1080p. So we look down here, and you know, we put numbers. This is H.264. This is main concept. This is X.265. This is VP9. So the top ends are really, really close. You know, 79.09, 80.99. That's, you know, there's, there's just not a lot of difference in VMAF score here. Um, VP9 is, uh, I don't think any of this would be a just noticeable difference. I don't think you would notice it, but it's clearly behind. And then, obviously, um, at these resolutions, H.264 is, uh, you know, certainly at the low end is, is, is lagging significantly. You know, the sweet, swap, sweet spot, again, would be, you know, somewhere between the 3 and the, and the 4.5. And, you know, main concept actually does pretty well there with the 94.64 as compared to 93.17 for X.265. But that's, that's one third of a just noticeable difference. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to see the difference there. And VP9 is actually, you know, in, in pretty close to the same range. You're, you're half of the JND there. Moving on to 4K, there is no, there is no file for AV1. They, did not, um, they were not able to supply the, the files for that. H.264 is here. Um, VP9, again, with this clip, is falling behind. Main concept and X.265 are, um, are pretty much neck and neck. Same, same thing here. H.264 is significantly behind. Um, and the other three are very tightly grouped. Same thing here. These are <coughs> tightly grouped together with, with uh, H.264 lagging. Liquor store, same thing. Big difference here. Minor differences here. And then the peer does a better job distinguishing those at the high end. So this is, you know, H.264 is here. <coughs> VP9 is here. X.265 is here. And main concept is, is again on top. And getting to the 4K summary numbers, um, 
you know, what's the sweet spot for 4K? You know, it's probably between 10 and 20. Um, we see the numbers here. H.264 is 87.54. It really can't compete against the HEVC codex. And VP9 is, you know, maybe half of the JND behind uh, the top quality of the, uh, the HEVC codex. Could be the shortest presentation I've ever given. Um, so, you know, my conclusions, you know, the qualitative difference between main concept and X.265 was pretty minimal, particularly with VMAF. You know, it was less than, in most cases, it was less than a third of a just noticeable difference. So I don't, um, I don't see making, at least with this study, I don't see a significant difference that would lead me one, one way or the other. Um, it's it's other, other characteristics of the codec that would, that would probably uh, lead to a decision. I need to redo the AV1 encodes to try and figure out where they are. And I also want to get comments from main concept and multicore where after they look at these results and see if, you know, what, what's, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a new metric. And, you know, when you're dealing with a new metric, sometimes you want to change your encoding parameters or, you know, we, we saw this with, with PSNR last time we did this in Streaming Media East. You know, with PSNR, you wanted to turn, you want to tune for PSNR because that disables some encoding configurations that actually make the video look better but score worse on PSNR. And I think the two vendors are going to want to understand how things work with VMAF to figure out how they need to tune their, their codecs to make it score as accurately as possible. So when you tune for a particular metric, you're not gaming the system. You're just trying to make sure that it, it's most fairly evaluated. But from what I saw, you know, there's not a, there's not a night and day difference between the HEBC codex. VP9 appears to be falling behind, and we just can't draw any conclusions about AV1. Any questions? Do you want to, anybody want to walk around with a handheld, or should I just repeat it? I guess I'll just repeat it. <laughs> Pardon? I've seen an increase in use of USB, uh, Intel's USB as a codec, but I've, I've never seen a professional analysis of its output. Have you looked at it yet? So we're talking about the Intel QSV codec. Um, when I, when I, I've been working on this since uh, the streaming forum in London in, uh, in February, and I asked Intel if they wanted to participate then, and they said no. So um, I tried to get them, uh, tried to get their technology, but they, they didn't want to participate. So I have not. Anybody work with the QSV codec? Quicksync. Pardon? Quicksync. Quicksync, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? On the main concept, which is it that you're using? Is it the CBIT? I'm so, I think it was all 8 bit. Oh, Sabbath? Um, I believe they did encode with Sabbath. So Sabbath is their, Sabbath is a way for them to produce multiple videos simultaneously, and, it, and it's, it's a more efficient production technique. Um, and and they, they did use that. Um, what I've seen, first of all, PSNR is, it, it's, um, I don't really trust PSNR for codec comparisons. I think PSNR works well for some simple comparisons, like if you're comparing the, a preset or you're comparing different keyframe settings, but I think the codecs are so different that it's just not, it's just not reliable. So I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of experience with SSIM. Um, so I really don't want to comment on that. The thing that really swung me was that, um, and I just have a lot of trust in Netflix, you know, they, and, and it, rightfully or wrongfully. I mean, VMAF is not that sophisticated a, um, a comparison. It's really, it's, it's, an, it's an amalgam of four pretty simple techniques. 
but it's tuned, it, it can be, it, it gets smarter as you throw more data at it. And again, I keep going back to the same thing. Netflix uses it, so I feel pretty comfortable relying on that as opposed to any other metric. What, anybody use any other metric or anybody? Well, I mean, that's what we don't know. I mean, we, 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 I don't know where they're going to end up with that, and that's, that's an analysis that the, um, the vendors have to do. You know, you don't want to game the system, but you want to get a fair score. And we did not disable, uh, we did not tune for PSNR for this particular analysis. And Hold your applause. Yeah. So, so as, but as you pointed out, um, ultimately, when you develop codex, the developers just want to do stuff for um, PSN codex. Uh, codex developers don't use SSI and PSNR BMF, any objective uh, metric to optimize the codex. We use our eyes. And we, as we make each tweak to the algorithm, we make sure the video actually looks better under a wide range of circumstances. Um, you know, any change that affects the visual. And we don't know from what main concept did, you know, they don't have that tuning mechanism, but they may have something similar to that. So, like I said, it's early days with VMAF. I still think it's a better, you know, we, we, subjective is best, but, you know, VMAF is in use on a massive scale without subjective, um, you know, day-to-day -day subjective uh, confirmations by Netflix. So it is a production tool that they're using, you know, produce a whole lot of video. So. <laughs> and that, and that's you know so that it, it's uh, I mean there you know you, this is a tremendous amount of work and you hate to you hate to leave with more questions than you start but this is where we are. But it was interesting to see the H.264 versus HPC. If you notice on some of those charts, right, it was very very clear that at least according to the MAF quality assessment, uh, HPC could produce equivalent quality at less than half the bit rate for some. And, and that's the BD number that, that Tom's group is actually going to help me calculate once we agree that the, the scores that we have are, are representative. So we'll, you know, we're going we're gonna to try and come out with that in the next, as I said, 30 to 60 days. What multiple real time are these, the H.265 have for any concept that is? You know, it's so machine dependent. I don't have those numbers at my fingertips. Um, but it, obviously, it's going to be machine dependent. Do you have any sense of that?
It's so hard because you, it really depends on even what machine. You know, it's going to be different on a 32-core machine than, a, than an 8-core machine. It's, you know, it's going to be different with Sabbath running as compared to just single filing code. It's just, it's really, you know, and, and with VP9 in particular, it, it's so inefficient from a multi-threading perspective that you really, literally can run eight encodes um, at the same speed as you can run like one. So there's so many variables that go into understanding that that it's just, it, it's very frustrating. Um, any other questions? Is there any comparison between the data that collected and the file that I'm sorry, say it again. Sorry. Uh, is there any I didn't, I didn't look at that. Yeah. And, and that, that's going to change the equation completely because you're going to have to use a different preset. Right. So right, you're, you can't, you're going to use one of the very fast or one of the low quality presets to get there. And that, I would anticipate, you know, significant changes uh, in the results there. It's another good study that could be done, right? Because the thing about studies is you, you never have enough of them. <laughs> OK. You know, I, I tell you to leave, but the beer doesn't start flowing until 5 o'clock. <laughs> But that's it. Thanks for coming. Yeah.